We were talked into running the Boston Marathon one year yeah. in 20, for the 2015 Boston Marathon. And it was a really incredible experience. We actually trained for almost a year. Uh, we. Just play smile oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Brian, I couldn't help but notice just now that you were sipping your morning coffee out of a beautiful Millinocket Marathon and Half mug, pottery mug made by Love and Lou Pottery up here in Millinocket. Yeah, yeah. The way you're mm, si- delicious. The way you're sipping it, it looks like victory. Victory. Victory is maybe. an interesting term. So we do the marathon, and it's a roaring success. My gosh. Well, we finished. Two middle-aged men finished yeah. the marathon. Woo. Hooray. But all we would do is talk about it, and people got really, really tired of us only talking about that. Right. So what do you do is naturally go into a dark room, just the two of us, yeah. and record the conversation, and then distribute it so only people who care about running will listen. And guess what? Runners like to listen to stories from like other it. runnings. They like Runners. it. So, Brian, where are we headed to right now? High school. Uh, we're headed to the high school to pick up our bibs and to check out the Artisan Fair. Okay. We're losing daylight, brother. Okay. That's just a production right. term. So, the Millinocket race came onto my radar. I'm sure it was through Runner's World, and I'm sure it was just through Facebook. I have two friends who live down in Boston who are from Millinocket, who grew nice. up in this town. And unfortunately, due to injuries, they weren't able to come up and run last year. But the idea was that we were all going to train for Millinocket and come up uh, together. We got into the habit of asking anyone who would talk to us on the show, have you heard about this race up in Millinocket, right. Maine? And it just became this thing. And then we would say to people, would you go if we go? Well, we have, uh, hey, we have to check people in. <laughs> we're all checked in. Here we go. We all know that uh, runners are crazy, so why not take on a challenge? Why not come to potentially a situation where you're running a half marathon or a marathon in brutal conditions? I mean, last year was very cold, but you could have three feet of snow on the ground. It could be a blizzard. It could be horrendous. You you don't know. That's part of what's exciting about it is really the unknown of what the weather might be. Probably won't be too hot. (laughs) If you don't like hot weather running, don't come. Right. I was really surprised last year. I didn't know what to expect in terms of this. Uh, I thought maybe folks would look at all the runners running up and down Main Street and say, what the heck is like, what are you doing here? You know? Yeah. And it was absolutely the opposite. It was almost an oversized appreciation for a bunch of yahoos running a race. Have fun. Come on, Millinocket, let's make some noise! It was so welcoming and so appreciative, and it was almost like I didn't feel I did enough. So many people here, this is fantastic. It just has a spirit of, we're in this together, we're trying to do this thing, this experimental thing, because I think that's really what Gary Allen is trying to do. He is, is trying to bring back attention and economy and workforce into this area because this is a beautiful place to be. I was inspired to start this race after reading a rather sad article in mid-November three years ago about the Katahdin region and Millinocket in specific and just about the downturn in the economy and the closing of the mills and so forth. And I 
couldn't unsee that. I thought about it, you know, for the next day and the next day. It triggered something in me that I thought I could help. So I thought running could help this town. And I have connections in that world, so I said, you know, I'm going to organize a running race. And I knew Millinocket didn't have time for the normal evolution of a race, nor with the fragile state of the community would they have a lot of energy to put into a race from a traditional sense, meaning that when people pay an entry fee, then they come in with expectations. It just sort of came to me that it was important to flip the formula and require runners to not come for what they get per a traditional race, but to come here for what they give. And it worked. It's a tough course. It's a very challenging course. Certainly the hardest course I've ever run on. Um, I've only done a handful of real official races, but this by far was the most uh, challenging elevation change that I've ever seen and experienced. And I definitely started thinking, what will an ultra be like? You know, I got, I got my work cut out for me in the next few years. Well, it's funny, I don't know what to expect. My training is so crazy. Uh -huh. Like, we're in the Cambridge half, felt really good. Um, and it's been sort of up and down as yep. far as whatever my hip lets me do. <laughs> Race-wise, I mean, it's got everything. It's got this dirt highway called the Golden Road, which is so remote. But beautiful because you can see Mount Katahdin, snow-covered Mount Katahdin. And then at each mile, there's a, a sort of an artistically made, unique mile marker. And some of them are quite intricate. And that just adds to the whole experience. It's really fun. So here we are. We're on the Golden Road. Oh, nice. I have to say, I didn't have any of the problems that I've had in the past. I think the, between the cortisone shot and the uh, physical therapy I've been doing, they're strong enough to do that, Man. to run a half marathon. Glad I do regular hill workouts. <laughs> I felt good, I felt fine, Yeah, but I don't feel like I could have gone faster. I didn't have anything more, and I think that has to do, and this is the point I'm trying to make, which is I ran to the level my training allowed me to do but what held my training back yeah was my hip of course awesome what's your name how old are you lucas awesome had a great race you'll well, probably pass me in about 10 minutes <laughs> <laughs> one kid I, I i didn't stop and talk to but i talked to while i was running with him and he was 11. he's got to be from maine because he's wearing shorts <laughs> And I gave him a, a Millinocket bracelet. How was your one today bracelet? But there were quite a few other teenagers and, and younger kids. We came to a, a low point in the road, and I looked up, and the road was just a sea of runners in neon colors, and it was thrilling. If you were training, uh, it would be the best training right there. I mean, a six mile hill with um, yeah. varied surfaces, yeah. you know, but mostly packed dirt. Pretty easy on your joints. Yeah, th this one takes a lot. This race is, is a hard one. And I think it's a combination of cold, even though it wasn't freezing, and the hills are hard. Getting a little warm. Uphills work. It sort of resonated big time off the running community. I think we're dealing with a, a revolutionary thing here, the cusp of something very different. And it's it's almost like taking taking running back in a lot of ways. 
you think of creating the skeletal structure of a race, but letting the runners paint the picture they want, as opposed to doing everything, you ultimately get a happier crowd and maybe a, a, a better event. I forgot that the back half wasn't all downhill. The front half is all uphill, but the back half is not all downhill. It's, it's really hills, not. and he said, boy, those were hard. This is one, all those hill miles, all those stupid stairs, all that work, week after week, pays off. When you can get to the top of this, and just have a little active recovery while it flattens out. That's where you did the work. Uh, our friend from uh, Run Weston, Chris Heisler, uh, had a good one. I don't know if it's original to him or if he borrowed it from somebody else. But when it gets really low, be a better runner, be a better person. And then you start to think outside yourself. You know, and then you see, uh, for example, I was running that through my head and I came up over the top of one hill and there were these two women at the end of their driveway. It was so cold and they just had some water and they saw me and they were cheering for me as I was shuffling. And I just said, be a better runner, be a better person. So I just got there, I thanked them and that kind of carried me through. I mean, I had lower moments, you know, five minutes later, but it, it, reaching outside of yourself, not just focusing on what a, a miserable time you're having at that moment. First year was 2015. We only had about two weeks from when we announced it on, on social media. And we had about 50 people show up. And we were so warmly received without any fanfare. We just sort of showed up and ran that I said, we have to come back with full force. And 2016, we ended up having 650 or 700 runners. It was Arctic cold. It was actually unhealthy cold. But the runners still came, and they still ran, and they loved it. I mean, this has now gone in three years to being one of the largest marathons in Maine. And... I don't think there's any slowing it down. I think it's just going to keep getting bigger. There he is. How are we doing? All right. How's your knee feeling? Okay. That's right. Okay, that's good. We're good. <laughs> End of movie. I like running a lot, actually, because if I didn't like it, I don't think I would do it because it's awful. So, yeah, I like it. Wait, you just said a contradictory thing. You love doing an awful thing? Yeah, it, it, it's called running, and that's a contradictory thing. Like, I do it for fun. I run for fun because it's awful. I love finishing running. I do, <laughs> I, I like being finished too. and having accomplished a run. The spirit of the people and uh, the look of the area, it's so gorgeous. So. At your bleakest moments of, oh, this hill, oh my gosh, or this down. I mean, the downs are so steep. But any time that I got sort of downhearted, all I had to do was look around, and you're instantly boosted because uh, we'll go back to the great words of Pam Rickard. We, we didn't have to do that. We got to do that. And I felt very connected to every other person in that race. Not that I was experiencing what they were experiencing, nor they me, but you definitely didn't, I didn't feel competitive in any way. And I, I didn't get that vibe from anyone else. I think everyone goes with a mindset of, well, I'm running this race for the town and I'm running yeah. this race for me. I gotta get to the side of the road. This is killing my ankles. You getting the crankle? No, it's more like my tendonitis. Uh, if I'm on too far over, yeah. Some races, it's Make sure you get that burp I just did. That was a good one. <laughs> Talking to an, a gentleman last year, I had gone out to breakfast the morning after and he came up and shook my hand and he basically said I spent my life working in the mill and when it closed, everything was gone and there were no benefits, there were no severance packages, it was just gone. And we never thought we would see a town full of people again and I can't thank you enough. They deserve it, they're good people, they're hardworking people, they, they're Mainers. 
Millinocket got knocked down onto their knees and then literally knocked out. And for them to give and do what they're doing here is the ultimate in generosity. These people are the best people on earth, no question. I don't know. To the rock. Nope. That's copyright infringement. <laughs> Are you two a package deal? Well, there's a bunch of us, but this is my son. <laughs> this is your twin? This is your twin. Just like me. How old are you? 45. You die oh, your my beard. son's 49. Right? He turns 30 at the end of the month. Oh, nice. Yeah. My hair is green. You've seen the dirty hair. I can know I dye my beard. What's happening there? So I, I dye my beard. Right. Oh, great. Just to show, just to shake it off. this man. I don't know. Make him guess. It's very stately. You know, it's very Santa Claus yeah. I'm only 46. He's not my son. He's just a friend. <laughs> when I see other people running that are easily 100 pounds less than me, I think to myself, I would love to see you magically be carrying 100 pounds right now. <laughs> Whether that be two 50-pound sacks of red russet potatoes, fine. Mm -hmm. I don't care. But I want to see you doing what you're trying to do right now with 100 extra pounds of baggage. Because mm -hmm. it's rough. I'm so glad we've established the Clyde Army because I think it helps people identify with that. Because there's nothing wrong with it. It's just, it's a different way of being. It's not, I can't run the way Brian runs, or I can't, certainly can't run the way Mike Wardian runs. That man is unbelievable. I'm back. Okay, I'm good now. By the time you get to the main real road, uh, that sun's behind the trees, and the clouds had moved in a little bit, and it that and, temperature changed. And about your five. lower layers are soaking wet. You're soaking wet. That's the thing. It's the amount of perspiration and work and and just cold wetness that you're carrying. And you could really, I could only imagine what it must have been like last year. A hill looks bad. But actually, I feel really good on hills. I like to take hills. That's where I can actually make up ground. Going down where I know people who are a little bit lighter or shorter or uh, fleeter of foot can can really benefit. Not me. That's not, the, that's not how I run. Okay. Taking a gel. This is a little uh, Roctane vanilla orange. It's like St. Joseph threw up in my mouth. <laughs> Fine. There goes my sponsorship money from Oops. GU. Oops. <laughs> GU, is it GU University? Thank you, Brian. Thank you, guys. Yep. Appreciate it. You guys all coming back around the second time? No. <laughs> Just the half. Anna Brooks, the social media guru who will be joining us, she and I maintained a good, strong pace up through about mile 10. And then I had a very uh, large uh, lower back spasm on my left side. And it uh, felt like a pinch, like a pinch nerve somewhere in my, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know. I, I'm not a good back person because I've never had any yeah. back issues. So that downhill I took pretty fast, but then it pinched it. So now just stepping hurts. Really, I'll see if... At mile 10, I had to request that I stop and walk for about a minute because of my back issue. Yeah, I knew that the next three were going to be an interesting sort of gut out of a run. When that happened, it really started to hurt as I was, was stepping. Like the next two miles, I, I saw you. And we even saw you in that neighborhood after the turn. I just want to be able to see Anna finish. <sighs> the only part that I was really upset about, because I was so, so excited for you, was that I wasn't going to see it. So I tried to kick it into gear. I caught sight of you one last time 
next because then it becomes almost almost a straightaway. Thank you guys. Thank you. There's a little bit of a curve on the on sort of the neighborhood street there, and then it becomes that main sort of Penobscot straightaway. This is my calf. Now it's my calf, man. This is amazing. And I could see you, and I knew you were good. sort of a quote-unquote running pace and then my right calf cramped it balled up tight 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 huh. yeah. and I don't know if that was a result of anything I might have uh. been doing to sort of uh, offset my back or if it was just hey man you were walking and you don't you're not used to walking and you're not used to these elevations and this is what you get I've never had to finish a race uh, as mentally challenging from that point on. The last three miles, essentially the last 5K, because I sort of started a new race right there. Uh, it was it was a very fascinating game for me, and, and I learned a lot. You want to go around again? <laughs> when I finished, about two minutes later, Brian, uh, there was Anna to greet me. I high-fived you on the way through, I believe. Was that a dream? Were you there, Brian? Yes. I high-fived you, and uh, the artist in residence was there, and possibly Igor Babushkin, I believe. It's all a blur. It's all a haze. I don't know. I was recovering from a half marathon, Peter. I, I don't oh, right. remember anything. Right. Uh, but I pushed through, crossed the mat, uh, went a little bit further because I like to do a smidge, and uh, there was Anna Brooks, who knew that I was going to want to do a smidge, and was a, up a little bit further past, uh, right, right up against the end of the logging trucks. And she was there to embrace me. And then I just broke down, man. I just broke down. I just had an emotional catharsis. Uh, it was really exciting. It was a really good time. Hello. I started watching Running With Cameras uh, when it started, uh, when it joined YouTube, and I've watched every episode. That's and funny, because... I enjoy it. Okay. Uh, it's... It's a good show. It's better than um, Cats. Um, I wish I had done more yoga. 